Hello and welcome to part two in our lock picking mini game mini series where we are creating a lock picking uh, system to open up a door. In the last episode, we worked on our lock picking mechanic and its uh, visuals. In this episode, we're going to work on the actual mechanics of actually turning the lock picks to unlock the actual door itself. So let's get started. So previously, we got the widget appearing on the screen showing our lockpick ready to go we now need a setup so it can receive inputs and maneuver itself around to set locks in the right place so we need to first of all get inputs working on it and away from the player so we go back to our padlock here and we're going to go over to the event graph uh, for the begin play and we're just going to take the get player char oh, character and get the player controller as well because what we will need to do is disable the input on the player character. So drag out from there and do disable input. And plug that in. And this will need the player's controller. And we also want to enable input on this actual actor. So drag this out, do enable input. And we'll just put that into the player controller there. Okay. So now we should be stuck on here. I should be able to move my character around in the background whatsoever. Okay, so I can't move at all. So now we need to get our thing registering our inputs. So the way that works is via the tick event. Because we have to constantly look at our gamepad's thumbsticks and see what position they're in. So let's go into our code here and look at the tick event. And in here we need to get gamepad right thumb stick and do the x-axis so the x-axis on the thumb stick basically goes from between minus one and one leaving zero in dead center so if, as you turn your stick you're, you're effect, so effectively just changing the x-axis we also when you move up and down affecting the y-axis again goes from minus one to one so what we're going to do is we're going to get the right thumb stick x-axis here and we're also going to get the right thumb stick's y-axis gamepad right y-axis now we've got them both together um, we do need to invert the x-axis so do multiply this by multiple uh, by minus one to invert it uh, you'll see it yourself if you want to test this out yourself just take that bit out and you'll see the difference it makes um, but trust me you need to do inversion here okay so then we want to make a rotator out of these two so just do make rotator And we'll plug the y axis into the pitch, and the yaw for z is going to be from this multiplier. We're then going to multiply this by the amount because this is still, remember, going between minus one and one, so these are very small values still. So this value here, we're going to drag out and multiply this by uh, a strength of how far it's going to rotate out. So I'm going to do 20. Okay. And on the tick event, what we're going to do is we're going to affect the scene, not the actual pick, but the scene itself. So let's drag out the left pick scene. Oh, in fact, this is the right thumb tick, so let's do the right pick scene. That makes more sense. And in here, we're going to set relative rotation. And we're going to plug in the rotation here, like so. So we're taking in the, the, the small numbers that we came from our thumbsticks and multiply it by 20 to give us a nice rotation based upon which way we're, we're holding our stick. So let's do that again for the left uh, scene as well. So left scene, set relative rotation. Plug that in. And it's pretty much the same setup, but instead of the right thumb stick, you're changing it to the left thumb stick. So we'll get left thumb stick x axis left thumb stick uh, y axis and um, yeah. and we again want to multiply the x one by minus one and we can do another make rotator Again, plug in the yaw and the pitch, like so. And then we're going to multiply it again by 20 to give us the strength of that. 
and that will go into the one up here like so okay so we're going to hit compile there and go to our game and push play to the door and now if i touch the sticks i can turn the stick around now one thing i've noticed here is that my stick rotation in the y is rotating in the wrong axis okay and that's probably because just the way i've orientated my sticks when i made them so this may vary based on how you've modeled it or made your sticks for your lock pick so just need to tweak those rotators to match that so let's go to the uh lock pick mini game and we're going to change the pitch here to be a roll instead see if that makes any good difference okay so i push up to go down i've got so i've got to invert that one which left it works fine right works fine so up and down are inverted just need to invert those and right and left are fine and just need to uh, and this one on the right thumbstick is correct so if i push up there it's going up down it's going down push up on the left thumbstick it goes down so i've just got to invert the left one that's all so always test it out before you go any further so left one just need to multiply this by minus one and i say the, this bit will vary based heavily upon which way you've modeled or made your lock picks okay uh so final test to make sure that that's fixed that one so if i push up on my left thumbstick it goes up down goes down left right up down left right so i can now maneuver my sticks independently of each other wherever i want okay so there is our sticks maneuvering around the next thing we need to do is generate the lock for this so if we go to the actual lock pick mini game and we're going to create a function in here and we call it generate uh, generate lock and on the generate lock essentially it's going to just find the combination that you need to get so what values do you need for each one so all we're going to do is we're going to do four variables so we need this one for uh, left lock x and that'll be a float we're going to duplicate that and that'll be left lock y we're going to duplicate that and that'll be right lock x and again right lock y so you've got four different numbers basically that you're going to look for and we're just going to set them quite easily by just going to our graph here for that function and do set 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 and we want it to pick a random value between minus one and one so we do random float in range and we're going to go between minus one and one because remember that is the, the distance the sticks will travel so we plug that into every single one of them now the way the random works is that it's not going to give the same uh, number to every single one of them okay it's going to do a new number for each one because it goes along here does this one and then it goes back to find where the number comes from and it goes to this one and goes back to this one and as it goes back it's gener generating a new number so don't worry you're not going to get the same number four times okay and that's our generate lock done hit compile and on begin play we can do generate lock okay next thing you do is check the success against that lock so we go down to our rotation stuff here on the tick because we're going to again want to check all the time whether or not we are successful with our positioning so we're going to do a nearly equals check so in here we're going to drag out our left lock x just drag the zoom in a bit and i want to get the gamepad left thumbstick of the x so let's just drag that in left thumbstick of the x and that in now it doesn't matter whether or not it's negative or not you just put it as is because the player doesn't know what numbers they are you're just seeing the end result visually so as long as that matches up it's fine um so yes as i said we want to do nearly equals two now the reason why we're using nearly equals is because floats can be very very small um and very hard to be accurate with so we'll put in the return value into b here 
and the error tolerance will be how easy or how hard you want this lock to be. So for example, we put 0.2, it means you can be within 0.2 of the actual answer to get a win. Okay. Um, similarly, we want to do the same for um, the right thumbstick and also in the Y and the uh, axis as well. So let's do these and do left lock Y. And we're going to do nearly equal to. And again, we're going to just copy that Y axis. Put that in there. Okay, so you want that one, that one, that one. And uh, we want to do the right thumbstick. That'd be right lock X there. Right lock Y. And do nearly equals two. Again, with the 0.2 tolerance. Now, if you wanted to, you can make it have different difficulties or different tolerances. So if you want to go to the variables here and type in tolerance. And we'll compile that set default value of that 0.2. I can then drag that onto each one of these. And then I can change it per lock that I want to spawn in. By looking at, let's say, the level of the door or whatever you may want to do. Okay, so now you've got these four conditions that need to happen, and they all need to be true at the same time. So let's do an AND node, AND boolean, and you want to add two more pins to this. So you've got four being checked. So let's just drag them all in. There, there, and there. And then we're going to put that into a branch. And that's going to connect up with the rest of the code here. Okay, so it's constantly checking those values around. Now, with the branch done here, we're going to tell it to just destroy the actor. So on true, destroy actor. And we want to remove the widget from the screen as well. So let's go back to our begin play where we create the widget and we're just going to promote that to a variable. And oh, lock pick widget and plug that in. Like so. And then on the end here, on destroy actor, we're going to take out that widget reference and do remove from parent. Okay, hit compile and we're good. Okay, dokie, so let's test this out. We go back to our game and push play and open the door. Now on my controller, I'm gonna move the sticks into a, the correct location. Now at the moment, I have no way of knowing what the correct combination is because there's no sort of vibration of when it's true or correct or whatsoever. So to help me test this, I need to put in some sort of vibration or some feedback to the player to say, hey, this stick's in the right location, this stick isn't. And there we go, we've now got our lockpicks working and turning around with our thumbsticks of our gamepad controller. However, it is very difficult for the player because there's no feedback given back to the player about where, which position their lockpick should be in. So in the next and final episode, we'll go through the process of adding force feedback to the correct positions that the lockpick should be in. You can watch the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Ailey, where you catch all my videos early from just $1 a month. Massive thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for the continued support. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.